Hello to all the learners out there. Dear students, today in this video lesson, we are going to take up session 2 of chapter 6 of class 7. The name of the chapter is Respiration in Organisms. The topics that we are going to cover in today's session are A. Human Respiratory System B. Mechanism of Breathing in Human Beings C. Breathing in Other Organisms like Cockroach, Earthworm and Fish D. Respiration in Plants The targeted learning objectives of today's session are as follows to gain knowledge about human respiratory system, to enlist the function of various parts of human respiratory system, to understand and explain breathing in various organisms like cockroach, earthworm and fish, to gain knowledge and understanding about respiration in plants. Before starting today's session, let's have a quick recap of the topics discussed in the last session. Students, we have already discussed that breathing is a process of exchange of gases. It involves inhalation and exhalation. Inhalation is intake of air rich in oxygen and exhalation is giving out air rich in carbon dioxide. Respiration is the oxidation of food. The two types of respiration are aerobic respiration which takes place in the presence of oxygen. It occurs in human beings, plants etc. Anaerobic respiration which takes place in the absence of oxygen. It occurs in muscle cell in human beings, yeasts etc. In muscle cell anaerobic respiration results in production of carbon dioxide, water and energy. In yeast, anaerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide, ethanol and energy. Take note that the energy produced in case of anaerobic respiration is lesser as compared to aerobic respiration. We have already discussed about breathing rate and its calculation in detail in the previous session. Briefly, breathing rate is the number of inhalation and exhalation per minute. Breathing rate keeps on changing depending on the physical activities being done. I hope you have understood the above mentioned topics well in the previous session. So, let's start today's session with a small activity which you can conduct yourself. We start the activity by placing a hand on your chest. What do you observe in terms of movement of the chest cavity? Yes, these movements can be observed very easily. You can observe that the chest moves in and out slowly. The chest moves out while you are inhaling and the chest moves in when you are exhaling. This inward and outward movement of the rib cage are steps of a physical process called breathing, which we have already discussed in the previous session. You would be thinking by now what happens to the oxygen rich air present in the lungs. To get the answer of this question, we need to have the knowledge of the human respiratory system. So, let's learn about the human respiratory system. Normally, we take in air through our nostrils. When we inhale air, it passes through our nostrils into the nasal cavity. From the nasal cavity, the air reaches our lungs through the windpipe. Lungs are present in the chest cavity as shown in the picture on the screen. This cavity is surrounded by ribs on the sides. As you can see on the screen, a large muscular sheet called diaphragm 
forms the floor of the chest cavity. Breathing involves the movement of the diaphragm and the rib cage. The mechanism of breathing is as follows. During inhalation, the ribs move up and outwards and the diaphragm moves down. This movement increases the space in our chest cavity and air rushes into the lungs. The lungs get filled with air. That is, the pressure inside the lungs is reduced due to the increase in volume of the chest cavity. And air from outside being at higher pressure compared to the pressure inside the lungs. During exhalation, ribs move down and inwards while diaphragm moves up to its former position. This reduces the size of the chest cavity and air is pushed out of the lungs due to the difference in the pressure inside the lungs volume decreases and pressure inside is more as compared to the outside. Therefore, air rich in carbon dioxide is exhaled. Hence, one breath includes one inhalation and one exhalation. Students, have you ever given it a thought that while you exercise, you tend to breathe fast? you also take deep breaths. Can you specify the reason? Yes, the breathing rate increases to inhale more oxygen. We can understand the mechanism of breathing by a simple model. The picture of the same is shown on the screen. Here we can see a wide plastic bottle with the bottom removed with a Y-shaped plastic tube inserted in the hole in the bottle cap. To the forked end of the tube are fixed two deflated balloons. To the open base of the bottle, a thin rubber or plastic sheet is attached. Students, to understand the expansion of the lungs, when the rubber sheet from the base is pulled downwards, the balloons inflate. As the volume increases and the pressure decreases, as compared to the outside and air moves from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. When the rubber sheet is pushed up, the balloons get deflated. As when the rubber sheet is pushed up, it results in decrease in volume and simultaneous increase in the pressure inside as compared to the outside. This results in the air moving out due to the pressure difference. Can you tell what do the balloons in this model represent? What does the rubber sheet represent? Yes, the balloons represent the lungs and the rubber sheet represents the diaphragm. The percentage of oxygen and carbon dioxide in inhaled and exhaled air is as follows. In inhaled air, 21% oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide is present. In exhaled air, 16.4% oxygen and 4.4% carbon dioxide is present. You must have also observed that if you exhale on a mirror, a film of moisture appears on its surface. From where do these droplets come? These droplets come along with exhaled air as it contains moisture. Students, you would have also heard your parents telling you to breathe through your nose and not through your mouth. You know that the air around us has various types of unwanted particles such as smoke, dust, pollens, etc. When we inhale, these particles get trapped in the hair present in our nasal cavity. So, breathing through nose 
helps in filtering the inhaled air. However, sometimes these particles may get past the hair in the nasal cavity. This may irritate the lining of the cavity as a result of which we sneeze. Sneezing expels these foreign particles from the inhaled air and a dust free clean air enters our body. Take care, when you sneeze you should cover your nose so that the foreign particles you expel are not inhaled by other people. Do you know that regular traditional breathing exercise like pranayam can increase the capacity of lungs to take in more air. Thus, more oxygen can be supplied to the body cells, resulting in release of more energy. Students, we just finished the topic of breathing in human beings. The next topic we are going to discuss today is breathing in other animals. Animals such as Elephants, lions, cows, goats, frogs, lizards, snakes, birds have lungs in their chest cavities like the human beings. How do other organisms breathe? Do they also have lungs like those of human beings? Let's find out. Cockroach. A cockroach has small openings on the sides of its body. Other insects also have similar openings. These openings are called spiracles. A network of air tubes called trachea for gaseous exchange. Oxygen rich air goes in through spiracles into the tracheal tubes, diffuses into the body tissue and reaches every cell of the body. Carbon dioxide from the cells goes into the tracheal tubes and moves out through spiracles. These air tubes or trachea are found only in insects and not in any other group of animals. Earthworm. You have already studied in class 6 that earthworms breathe through their skins. The skin of an earthworm feels moist and slimy on touching. Gases can easily pass through them. It is known as cutaneous respiration. Though frogs have a pair of lungs like human beings, they can also breathe through their skin which is moist and slippery. Students, can we breathe and survive in water? No. We cannot breathe or survive in water. But there are many organisms which live in water. How do they breathe under water? You have studied in class 6 that gills in fish help them to use dissolved oxygen in water. Gills are projections of the skin. You may be wondering how gills help in breathing. Gills are well supplied with blood vessels for exchange of gases. Do plants also respire? Like other living organisms, plants also respire for their survival. They also take in oxygen from the air and give out carbon dioxide. In the cells, oxygen is used to break down glucose into carbon dioxide and water as in other organisms. In plants, each part can independently take in oxygen from the air and give out carbon dioxide. The leaves of the plants have tiny pores called stomata for exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Don't you want to know whether roots which are underground also take in oxygen? If so, how? Like all other living cells of the plants, the root cells also need oxygen to generate energy. Roots take up air 
from the air spaces present between the soil particles. That was the last topic for today's session. I hope you all have understood it well. Before ending the session, let us have a quick recap of what we have learned today. We have learned about the following topics. A. Human respiratory system, functions of each part of the system. B. Mechanism of breathing that is movement of ribs and diaphragm. C. Importance of breathing through nose. D. Breathing in cockroach which takes place with the help of tracheal system. E. Breathing in earthworm which takes place with the help of moist skin. F. Breathing in frogs which takes place with the help of lungs and moist skin. G. Breathing under water in fishes which takes place with the help of gills. H. In plants, gaseous exchange takes place due to stomata present on the leaf surface. Roots also take up air from the air spaces present between the soil particles. Now, it's time to practice some questions to enhance the knowledge. The questions are as follows. List two steps involved in breathing. Name the small pores present in the leaves of the plants which play a role in gaseous exchange. The following question is a case based question. A student took a test tube and added lime water to it. He then took a deep breath and exhaled into the test tube containing lime water. First question, when he exhales in the test tube, what will he observe? Second question, is it a chemical change or a physical change? Third question, this test is used to test the presence of which gas. Next question. Describe the mechanism of breathing. Next, briefly explain human respiratory system and list the function of each part. The next question is, how is fish able to breathe under water? Next, do plants respire? If yes, then explain. The next question is, how does gaseous exchange occur in frogs, earthworms and cockroach? Very good. You all have understood today's session very well. With this, we have now come to the end of today's session. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Happy learning.